Hey guys, Justin here from 420 Consulting with another episode of Follow Up Friday. We just want to say a big thank you again to Andrew Gordon from the BC Craft Farmers Co-op for joining us last week on our little adventures. That was a great time and we learned a lot and had a lot of laughs, so thank you very much. We're going to keep it a little bit short and sweet this Friday with the long weekend coming up and we're going to answer some questions that we've gotten from our subscribers. So Mac has got the three best questions we've received over the last month and we'll try and do this, you know, once a month um, just so we can get some of uh, these questions answered on the follow-up Friday. Okay, Mac, so without further ado, hit okay. the questions. Number one, what kind of career opportunities are available in the craft cannabis space? Well, there's tons of career opportunities directly in the cannabis space and those are the obvious ones. Master grower, responsible person in charge, uh, there's a QA person if you have a processing license and heads of security. So those are the critical Health Canada mandated um, jobs and careers. But there's all sorts of stuff. There's really no limits. I mean, lawyers, insurance brokers, uh, handyman, electricians, maintenance people, um, gardeners. Uh, literally, there is no limit to what spin-off industries and what what you. If you're a great marketer, there'll be somewhere for you in the Canada space. If you're great at bookkeeping, there's going to be a job for you in the Canada space. So literally, there's no real limit in terms of the careers. You just need to find your niche and, and, and be good at what you do and somebody will find you. Send us your resume. Okay, number two. I know we get this one a lot and here at 420, we've processed quite a few licenses and have a lot in our uh, personal queue right now. So with all the licenses being put through Health Canada, do you see a flood in the Canadian market? That is another great question. I get asked that question all the time. Literally, it's probably one of the top 10 questions I ever get asked. So, yeah, I mean, like, it doesn't take a math major to figure out there's thousands upon thousands of kilograms of cannabis being produced in the licensed space right now, not to mention what's getting produced in the uh, in the illicit space. So, yeah, there's definitely that, that is a real threat, no doubt about it. But I always say this, if you are growing top quality product, in excess of 25% THC, in excess of 2% uh, terpene profile, with no pesticides, no mold, no powdery mildew, no microbials, no heavy metals, you'll always be able to get top dollar for your product. There is no doubt about that. So one recommendation I have is that uh, if you're gonna do a processing facility, make sure it's EU GMP certified, make sure it's designed properly so that you have access to those other markets down the road, the EU market and the US market in particular. Okay, and last one, kind of a fun one. What kind of spin-off industries do you see coming in the future of cannabis? What a great question. I love it. I don't get asked this enough, to be honest with you. This is a really great question. And I've kind of got a, an idea myself. And if you want to steal it, then that'd be great because I want to see more of these things. So I would love to see a cannabis wellness center that's centered around massage therapy with CBD oils, yoga, mental health uh, retreats, meditation sessions, all the things that we kind of neglect in our modern busy world i'd love to see a place that that you know use cannabis and cbd and the plant to promote healing from within uh both physically mentally and spiritually so that's my answer that's my idea so thanks again for everybody for joining us i know it's a little short and sweet this week but uh tune in next week when we check out my father-in-law's plants and i think we're going to see somebody from the edible space so make sure you tune in next week thanks a lot everybody have a great week